a very warm welcome to all the participants and the viewers and delegates who have joined this uh, conference uh, virtually and i heard there's more than 500 delegates i welcome everybody thanks to dr praveen sahu and dr raji uh, from the university of padio for bringing me out here today to talk on the cancer immunotherapy and uh, how to go about and not to forget that we are in the midst of the uh, COVID pandemic. Now, what happens in this COVID pandemic with the second wave rising? And you know how India was badly hit with large number of mor morbidities and mortality. And uh, we did see a uh, fall in the success rate and a rise in the death rates, um, and which led to a lot of research and vaccines around the way. Uh, so that brought us to the discussion that this particular um, vi viral infection does cause a cytochrome storm in the body and all the more cancer patients are very much affected uh, by this because of their lowered immunity, even if they are vaccinated, they do get into uh, the ICU, they need oxygen, they need ventilatory support to keep them going. So now what this uh, concept behind this is that they have um, seen that whether we can uh, have a, a type of antibody, which is administered inter uh, intravenously, which can counter uh, these uh, viral load inside the body. And as it neutralizes the viral load in the body or the spike protein, this antibody goes and sits with the spike protein which of the virus, which is inside the body and neutralize it. So antibody antigen reaction, and it's a type of passive antibody introducing into the body, unlike the vaccine, which is active immunity. So now this happens to uh, the, uh, uh, so this was the drug which got approved, uh, casirimimab and imdemimab, uh, which is a neutralizing antibody. It's a cocktail targeting the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Initially, the trial started in US, where uh, our ex-president Donald Trump was one of the recipients when he was positive. And this is uh, used, it is approved, it's indicated, and it is used in, in an emergency situation for the treatment of mild to moderate uh, coronavirus infection, and both in adults and pediatric is one of the drugs which has its approval in the pediatric age group, that is 12 years and at least 40 kg of body weight. And those who have um, a SARS-CoV virus positive, and uh, the eligible people are usually above age 60 and also people who are uh, in the pediatric age group and high risk factors are anything related to obesity, all the comorbidities of the cardiovascular system like hypertension, chronic lung disease, uh, diabetes mellitus, okay, renal failure, liver disease, transplant patient, dialysis, and not the least, but another very important is immunocompromised. And as you know, in the um, case of uh, oncology, all these patients are mainly uh, are highly immunocompromised. And then what they need at this point of time, something to boost their immunity and when they are infected with this virus. Now, so that's how the uh, the two drugs, casirivimab and imdemimab, is the two drugs to be given at the dose of 12,200 milligram each, but India had its approval for 600 milligram each now to be given in an intra, uh, intravenous infusion it can be given in a subcutaneous route and what are the criteria let's look into how uh, they can be these people can be um, started one is that they will be uh, they were um, have to be covid positive preferably between 7 to 10 days of infection might should have all the underlying comorbidities that we have listed and along with that cancer patient. So in our case, we, we have given to two of the cancer patients. I tell you about the cases a little later. And uh, remember, you have to give the uh, injection in the mild to moderate because it, it not to be given in asymptomatic and not to be given in the severe case. And there's a risk factor assessment and, uh, and and physician is always involved in this administration. Okay. And uh, so let's see which is the people who do benefit um, in this, those who are hospitalized due to COVID-19 uh, infection, requiring oxygen therapy, progressing from mild to moderate, Okay, and required is in the increase in the oxygen flow level are all prone to um, get uh, get into the severe stages. That's when this uh, monoclonal antibody is being used. 
So remember, it has a restricted use, only a, a, the indications which I have told earlier, and beyond this, it should be um, given, it should be restricted uh, not to give to any other people. Now, as you know, any of these monoclonal active antibodies, and we use it in all our cancer patients like rituximab, trastuzumab, panitumab, pertuzumab, et cetera, which does reaction, cause an immune-related reaction during the time of the transfusion. Now, see, and apart from the intravenous administration, some of them may get allergic reactions and they may get um, sometimes anaphylaxis. So my dose of steroid and antihistaminics might be a little better uh, to be given prior to administration. Now, so, but remember that do not forget to wear your masks, maintain social distancing and COVID appropriate behavior and the vaccine is the only treatment as on today. This prevents you from in, uh, progressing from the uh, moderate to the severe infection. And this particular com cocktail combination is a monoclonal antibody recombinant IgG1 and given in an intravenous solution. And it has the two drugs, which is the Casirimab and the Imdemimab, which has been given uh, to find out the, um, which will counteract with the spike protein of the SARS-CoV virus and, and will decrease the efficacy of the viral viral meal. So those uh, contraindications are, if you have a severe allergic reaction, yes, you should not be given, and it should not be given in cases of ch uh, children less than 12 years, or a very sick patient, yes, avoid to give it in um, sick patient. In pediatric use, no drug uh, uh, adjustment is needed, provided the child is more than 40 kg of body weight and is more than 12 years. No dose adjustment is needed for pregnancy or lactating women. No dose adjustment for renal failure is needed. Even the pharmacokinetics is, uh, does not cause much hepatic impairment and so not needed even in a, so quite reasonably safe in a people who is having a renal failure, hepatic failure, um, um, it's reasonably safe and as such a comorbid patients. Now let's come to the uh, topic of today as we uh, transfused to two people. First was a case of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. It was stage four and it was in the, um, it was in the, um, uh, it's an urinary bladder extra nodal um, uh, lymphoma and which has spread to the other areas of the bones and the body, almost stage four. He was young in 47 and presented with obstructive uropathy, renal failure, creating in of three milligram per deciliter. And that's the when it, uh, um, he got admitted. So he was SARS-CoV virus positive. Initially, we started uh, with the, our protocol, constant cough, lungs are CT showing um, uh, COVID uh, viral pneumonia, but on a mild to moderate grade. So in view of his high risk condition with an underlying cancer, we started him on uh, therapy with uh, um, therapy with uh, uh, giving the, uh, uh, giving the um, uh, uh, therapy with him, which will uh, cause to that means, which is related to the, um, uh, to related to the, uh, steroids because we wanted to uh, decrease the obstructive uropathy and this obstructive uropathy uh, the, as the tumor shrunk so the uh, the bladder tumor okay um, opened up and then uh, so it was preferable and as the creatinine started coming down and uh, so um, we were able to give the dose there and thereafter the patient got discharged he did not need much oxygen and he had not have ICU admissions and, uh, and he did not need to uh, be uh, put on the ventilator as such, mm, okay? Next is uh, um, another thing is related to the second case. Second was an elderly with lot of comorbidities, okay? And this comorbidity caused the um, uh, uh, having, uh, he also had a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and he, uh, because of his comorbidity and he was COVID positive, he had mild to moderate, mild to moderate, uh, uh, mild to moderate infection. And because of that, we were able to start him and he was relatively stable. He had a single day admission. Uh, he had a single day of admission and after the admission, uh, he was able to uh, give the um, infusion and the next day we discharged. So again, this second patient with a comorbidity did not need any, um, uh, did not need any um, um, uh, 
any of the um, uh, supports like oxygen, ICU. Okay, so that's a, so that was a success story. And this particular drug is or combination is approved only in the case when you have a mild to moderate, and it prevents you from progressing into a severe ICU admission or ventilator admission. So that was our two cases. Beyond that, we had given to two more patients who had one was 95 years male and one 85 years his wife. Both COVID positive came from another city back to Chennai, hearing our results on the uh, monoclonal antibody. Okay. Um, and so we also gave them, they were asymptomatic and returned back home. They had a large number of comorbidities. So just an example, I wanted to share the experience of using in four patients in India who did really well, they recovered and we were able to save from the severe devastating effects of the COVID-19 virus in this particular susceptible population. So um, the cost is, yes, is an issue, but, but definitely it is cost effective as far as India is concerned. The wild cost 60,000 with another admission charges, okay, but relatively much cheaper than once you get into the ventilator where the cost become exorbitantly higher. Okay, so um, and uh, so again, it has got approved an emergency approval from the drug controller of India after the US approval, and we are now allowed to use. Um, so we wanted to discuss this case with the cancer on immunotherapy, how and in a SARS CoV virus, and which is the present talk of the day. And, uh, and that's all, let's hope we will have a better and as and more, more and more patients we are recruiting, we will come to know. And just a line of word, as you know, many of the drugs are falling out of the armamentarium, like remdesivir, toclizumab, plasma therapy. I hope this drug stays along and helps these our patients to continue. So I uh, once again thank the organizers and for having me here. It's a short talk and with a very early experience in a country like India, which is now under the devastating uh, second wave and we are struggling to vaccinate. Please take your vaccine on the time. Uh, continue COVID appropriate behavior. And this two drug, Cassie uh, Ribimab and Indemimab has its uh, own approval. We use it above 60 years also in children with comorbidities, hypertension, cardiovascular, lung, and diabetes and chronic renal disease, and all the more for cancer patients to prevent them from the uh, mortality. And I thank everybody for listening to me.